So back on October 27th of 2017, I picked up this Ozone Freeride 16 meter. It's been my go-to wing ever since. And since I unboxed it, I kind of wanted to modify the steering system, but quite frankly, I just never sat down to do it. So today we're gonna modify the brake system on this Ozone Freeride 16 and hopefully get some better or different performance out of it. So we're modifying brake lines today. On your standard glider, the system's very simple. You have one brake line per side, which connects to one toggle per side. You pull one down, you let one up and you go right. You pull the other one down, let one up, you go left, you pull both and you flare. Very simple operation. On more advanced gliders, however, which in Ozone's lineup is the Freeride and the Viper 4, they come with 2D steering. Now what that means is there's two brake lines per toggle. Now your inner line goes up and connects to basically the entire one half of the wing minus the tip. Your other line goes up and just connects to the tip. So the cool thing is how these work in conjunction. On my free ride here, you can see that one brake line, the center brake line, goes through a pulley. What this allows you to do is it creates different results depending on if you push out or pull in. So for example, if you pushed your hand out, that center line that goes through the pulley would be deflected more and you'd get a liftier uh, drag induced turn. If you pull towards the center, you hit the outside tip line more than the inside line and you get a faster roll rate, less lift, less drag turn. Now on my free ride example here, how it comes from the factory is actually on a long bungee. And what this means is that the 2D isn't very defined. Typically this pulley is fixed directly to the riser right here. So you get a really definitive feel between the two different lines. The cool thing is, which I've come to like, is that it's very comfortable. You can just put your hands out here and it's kind of like comfortable handlebars, I guess, on a motorcycle. Any position really works, but the downside is the 2D steering isn't that effective. So basically what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna eliminate the bungee from the system, tie that pulley right to the riser, and we're gonna modify the lengths of my lines to hopefully get more definitive 2D steering out of this wing. All right, if by chance you were able to follow that whole process, props to you. But if not, here I am to explain. So first off, I took the bungee off, which was on this little guy here. And then we took this little guy who was down here and moved him up here. And then I undid the brake lines. I took off this thing, because who really needs this thing? And then I shortened both lines. I shortened the inner one by 1.5 inches and the outer one, the tip line, by about three inches. Hopefully what that allows for is a better feel on the 2D because I got rid of the pulley. And second, I'm hoping to get a little bit more authority out of the tip steering. On the other hand, um, I gotta say, these Risky Biscuits branded PPG smoke systems, you guys have been killing it. I haven't even officially released them. I just made a post on my Instagram, which you should follow, link in the description. Just off of the post on Instagram, we're almost sold out of these guys. I'm already ordering more uh, so that we have them ready for the official drop, but soon enough, I'll be installing the smoke system on my current motor. I'm gonna do my other riser. It'd be really awkward if I just did one and forgot to do the other side. So I'm gonna do that and then uh, we'll be ready to fly later on tonight.
out the new wing adjustments. Good news is I didn't horribly misroute anything. My lines aren't tangled, so that's a plus. So far so good, it actually feels like it's really dialed on the correct length. One thing I'll note is like I said in the intro, most advanced wings, like slalom gliders, use 2D standard. However, certain gliders like that spider that Ernie's flying and Jeff is flying and the Sirocco, which is a C-wing, uh, spider being a B-wing. The cool thing with gliders like that is you can actually tie in the tip, which is normally independent on its own little toggle, but you can tie it to the main brake line. And now all of a sudden you add like power steering to your B-glider. And I think technically in the manual, it's not recommended, but honestly, I know a lot of people that do it and they don't have any issues with it. So I can't recommend it, but you know, it's fine. Just cruising on a snowy day. Jeff's up there. I'm down here. Ernie's over there. Is that a pumpkin? I think that's a gourd. So one big thing I can notice right off the bat, without that uh, bungee, now with my pulley directly fixed to the riser, the control feels way more direct. All right, so come up kind of sort of high, hopefully escaping some of the turbulence down low. Not really though, it's still bumpy. Uh, gonna try some aerobatics, or as uh, everyone actually calls it, acro. People always get fussy, they're like, acro is what gymnasts do, aerobatics is what airplanes do. Whatever, man. Definitely a different feel. Yippee ki -yay. Is that a thing? I don't even know if that's a thing. Yeah. She, uh... I guess the way to describe it is it feels more on rails, which is interesting. <clears throat> Not exactly the feeling I expected, but I like it. And I think it's an improvement. I think I just got so used to flying it, uh, how it was set up from the factory. But now, now we're talking. All right, I'm gonna come in for a landing and park it for a minute, and then we'll do some more flying a little later on. everyone always loves those transitions. So since I filmed that video, I put a little bit more time on the wing and so far I'm really loving it. I think the handling overall is much improved. Uh, one thing I did change is I felt like the lines overall were a little too short, which meant my hands were up really high and it wasn't that comfortable. Also, if you notice in the landing clip, I came to a full flare and the wing like violently stalled. And I don't like the lines to be that short. I want it to be like right on the edge, but not that violent. So 
by letting the main line out like another inch and a half, that fixed the problem. But yeah, overall, if you're thinking about um, doing the modification where you tie the two lines together, like on a Spider or Sirocco, I definitely recommend consulting someone who's already done it or consulting your instructor or something, because it is something that can go wrong if you uh, tie them too short or misroute them or something. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Drop a like if you did. We got some more interesting stuff on the way as springtime slowly rolls in, but I'll uh, catch you guys in the next episode. Till then, peace. Zzz.